Um, let me do the formal YouTube intro and we will uh, get going. All right. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. And right now we're about to have an exclusive conversation and interview with Mr. Sebastian Murphy of the band Viagra Boys, whose brand new LP, Cave World, is out now. We're going to be talking about that. Anything else that comes up in the conversation? Uh, the icebreaker question that Sebastian and I agreed on in the spirit of being on Twitch, uh, I wanted to know what his top five favorite games are because I, I guess he's a secret gamer. Um, and he, he wants to tell us some of his favorite titles uh, before we kind of start talking about the music. All right. Yeah, I'm actually sitting right here at my gaming station. Yes. My, uh, yes. My you got a whole rig. That's my rig down there. Nice. I got my sick ass sumo lamp. Okay. Um, I've got Escape from Tarkov up there. So that's my number one game. Got it. Be Escape from Tarkov and then two, maybe Squad. And then I guess I play some Battlefield and I play, uh, uh, I don't know. We'll stick with the top three. Okay. All right. So you're, you're an FPS boy. I am. Okay. I am, yeah. Got it. Got it. Is, is there anything? Oh, like and of course, of course, uh, like Dark Souls and, uh, okay. and the whole uh, fantasy. Yeah. Uh, you, you also, Soulsborne. you also like, you yeah. also like to torture yourself. I, that's yeah. Most yeah. of all, I'm, yeah. I'm a masochist. Yeah. yeah, I got it. So, is there is there anything about that genre that sort of you know draws you to it specifically? Uh, just the pain. Just I think the pain. just the pain. Yeah. And 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 the FPS stuff is that uh, you know sort of like a rush for you? Are you like you know? Uh, yes, you know, especially getting, with getting the, kill, are you getting kill streaks, landing headshots? Like I'm, I'm getting killed a lot. Getting killed. <laughs> so you're a masochist with that too. Yes. Yes. Got it, got it. So, so, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't say you enjoy it. You have fun, but you wouldn't say like your elite level. No, definitely not. Definitely not. No, okay. no I'm a noob. I'm a okay. noob for sure. I got it. So you just you rush in there and you just take the L immediately. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. I'm cannon fodder. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> this, this new album is out now. Let's talk about it. I'm going to review it later. What should I give it? Give it a six out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I think. You're, I, I think don't know what. What do you use the number? You use the number system, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I use the number you, system. You don't, number you don't of, give it a two thumbs up. No, I, I use the number system. The number is whatever I you know, but whatever the artist tells me after I DM them earlier in the day. But we're already talking okay. together, so I figured we just All get right, it out yeah. of the way now. But six. Well, I'll, I think you're. Low, I, said, I think, I, I think you're I'll lowballing you. it. I'll send you a DM with what okay. I actually. All right. Think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think you're lowballing it a little bit, but um, <laughs> you know, whatever. All right. So um, you know, though though in in your estimation, uh, you know, with everything that you guys have accomplished so far, w would you say this is uh, the best album that you guys have come together with? Um, it's definitely. Uh, I don't know, man. That's a hard question. Yeah, uh, no, I know it is. Uh, I would definitely say that i'm very proud of this album at least and i'm very proud of what we've accomplished and what kind of direction we've started to go in or taken this album or i'm just glad that it's in i'm glad that it's something new that that kind of just uh you know i love i i'm, I'm very fond of our first album uh street worms yeah uh so um i'm glad that this is a little bit different from that as well but yeah i'm very proud of it i'll mm -hmm. say that Okay. Um, I wanted to kind of pick your brain about some of the more conceptual angles of the record, um, because I, I think more than your past two albums, the, the album really kind of has a, a pretty cohesive theme to it. Um, yeah. So, you know, what, what kind of, I guess, started you down this rabbit hole where a lot of these songs are, I, I guess, in a way, kind of focusing on the human condition. And it's, it seems like a lot of the problems or, or issues that you're focusing on, especially with like kind of, you know, modern iterations of human behavior in the digital age it seems like you're kind of almost rewinding to like caveman days you know it's like this this is this is like you know crow magnon type behavior that we're seeing here uh it, at least that's how yeah I it. yeah i mean i think it's uh it kind of started with me like watching documentaries about monkeys and stuff like that and uh also i watched 
I watched 2001 A Space Odyssey maybe like three times a year. Hmm. And um, when I just started thinking about the world today and like human beings in general and like what what's wrong with all of it, I started making this like I tried to think back on like our history on the on the earth uh, and like where it all went wrong. Uh, and I think it's, uh, and I came to the conclusion that it all started getting fucked as soon as we, as soon as we began existing, uh, basically, or as soon as we became humans, you know, when we went from apes into Neanderthals, that's when it all started. And, uh, or that's when the downfall of the world started, in my opinion, uh, is when we gained the ability to see into the future and to plan and to think about our past. Because that's also where we kind of developed egoism and uh, and the the ability to plan, you know, I don't know, mass murders or you know, genocide or war or anything like that. And uh, I don't know. I just started to develop this like through through this whole pandemic and all this shit. I kind of started to develop a kind of dark uh, uh, outlook. On, on the human race in general. Uh, and it made me wonder, like, were we better off as monkeys? Mm-hmm. So that's the question I want to pose. <laughs> um, you know, for the, the closing track, you know, how, how do you feel like that kind of plays into that message and theme? Because it would seem almost like in a way, messaging wise, you're almost like advocating for those who are maybe like conspiratorial or are, um, you know, believing yeah. these wild things that you talk about on the record to, to almost like voluntarily separate themselves and like go exist in the woods or something. I don't know. Um, is, is that yeah, kind of it, like, is, is that kind of like kinda, asking them to take themselves out of the gene pool or something? In a way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely is. And it's, but it was also when I started writing that song, it was kind of me hoping to take myself out of the gene pool mm. as well. And then like, cause when I, when I wrote that song, the first thing I wrote was just, uh, was just leave society be a monkey, which is a meme. Uh, but I just kind of like imagined, um, I just imagined like, like, okay, this would be sick live to have like, you know, 2000 people just chanting, leave society, be a monkey, you know? And then just when the, when the guitar comes in, like, like everyone just goes nuts and start, starts throwing bananas and hanging from the ceiling and like getting naked and all this shit. And uh, I just saw this beautiful image in my head. And then I had to like, and then I was like, Oh fuck, I have to write some verses to it as well. Or I have to, I have to write some actual lyrics. And then when I wrote the lyrics, it kind of was this like, you know, uh, fuck you to to all these people that uh that think they have these answers and whatnot so so it's kind of a there's it's kind of a and it's i feel like everything i do is a little bit two-sided or like where it's kind of like towards myself and towards people that i'm not too fond of <laughs> you know and uh where my message isn't always super clear but i like i like it that way you know you know, would would you say the completion of this record or kind of like getting these thoughts out there? I mean, is 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 this something that allows you to kind of like fold over these ideas and put them down into a piece of art, put them down on paper, and then you can kind of like set them and forget them? Or is this kind of like a point of view that's always nagging at you and is always like informing your view of, of everything and you can't, you know, let it go? Is there kind of like a negativity that itches at you as a result of kind of looking at things this way? Um, I don't really know, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm not too good at like, I don't go around like expressing myself too often about, you know, these different questions and about what's going on. So I definitely think it's just a way of venting. And, uh, and then, yeah, usually I just vent and then I go, go on to the next, uh, whatever's going on next in my life. So, but yeah, I think it would be a, uh, I feel like I'm not. I think it's a mix of both of what you said. Kind of. <laughs> I got it. Um, yeah. I also wanted to touch down on a couple tracks here. Cognitive Trade, uh, ADD as well. I mean, obviously those tracks kind of like flirt a little bit with uh, with mental health and neurodivergence. Like is, is, you know, is ADD something that you personally or members of the band like deal with on a regular basis? 
yeah i definitely deal with it and uh it's always been a it's always been a very prominent part of my uh part of my life you know i mean in school i had a really hard time concentrating and uh and then in you know in later in life of you know partners that i've had or whatever you know can definitely notice that i zone out pretty often and you know i'm very uh I have a very hard time doing menial tasks uh, and, you know, and this is uh, what I've heard at least is a, is a, is a result of my ADD or uh, at least I think it is, but, uh, but yeah, it's always kind of been a struggle just having this inability to, to concentrate on very simple things. And then, you know, and then of course I can get extremely concentrated on, uh, on other things like, you know, art or music or stuff like that when i actually do it i fucking do it but uh getting getting there is pretty difficult uh and yeah when i wrote add i just wanted to write write something that people could uh relate to and uh and then the whole cognitive trade-off thing uh <laughs> yeah there's just one line in there that's like is there some sort of connection to my add and that's honestly that's honestly just a question that i started like posing like i wonder if it i wonder if my add dates back to uh this cognitive trade-off that happened millions of years ago who knows you know but uh it's a question to all you scientists out there <laughs> you, know, you, 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 you sort of alluded to it with uh you know talking about like you know, having a difficult time, maybe starting something, but once you're there, as far as like art or music goes, you're kind of there. Like, is, is there any other ways in which, you know, for you or anybody else who's watching who might be dealing with something similar, um, you know, that it kind of like affects your process creatively. And, you know, do you personally have like workarounds or approaches to kind of like get around the, you know, maybe I guess obstacles that it may throw in front of you? I mean, it's all kind of like, I guess it's pretty simple shit. Just like, just start, you know, just, just start doing, doing something or, you know, also taking care of yourself. Like things are much easier to do. If you, if you like, I feel my brain works, but much better if I exercise or if I, you know, do simple stuff like that. And, um, but it's all this, it's all this shit that my dad probably used to tell me, like, you know, just sit down and do it or, you know, just start it. And for me, I, I always need, I'm like the laziest person in the world. So I need someone else to like, and that's kind of bad advice for anyone. Like tell someone else, tell someone else to, to tell you what to do. But, uh, but I do need, I do need like in my band, at least I've got, I've got my bass player. He's always on my ass. Like, you know, just, just write a fucking song, you know? And, uh, and I'll just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm going to start writing. And then I don't start writing the song until like the last day in the studio and we've got all the music done. Uh, and the only, I've only got like three words hmm. and then all of a sudden I'll write it in the last 10 minutes. And, uh, so, you know, some people are really good at pr procrastinating and I think I am as well. And, and, um, yeah, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's good for some people to hear also, you know, like it's no, okay I mean to, <laughs> to no, that's, procrastinate. That's, that's classic ADD, ADHD behavior. Like you get it done in the last five minutes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Hey, it's work. It's worked out. So I mean, you just, you just set the deadline earlier, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to psych yeah. yourself out. Um, you, you talk for a second there about taking care of yourself, which I wanted to, uh, it, I, I think would be an interesting topic to dive into a little bit because like for you, yeah. you know, what, what, what is that, what is that and what does that mean? Because, you know, and, and obviously, you know, it's like art is art and it's kind of like a world of play and fantasy and everything. But like, I, I feel like if anybody were to, as I have been like, you know, listening to the band's music and yeah. kind of like taking to heart a lot of the things that are said, like, you know, a, a lot of the messaging and a lot of the aesthetics that come across are, are quite sleazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't hear the record and I'm like, yeah, this is like definitely a band of healthy dudes. <laughs> Yeah, so, but it, you know, well, you know, it surprisingly is uh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, go into that. Uh, not so much. I wouldn't say I'm one of the healthier ones in the band, but uh, uh -huh. but most of the dudes in the band are are uh, fathers to young children, and uh, and they, you know, they just live that dad lifestyle, and um, 
but most of us probably come from a uh, background of a pretty destructive lifestyle. Hmm. But I think we all kind of came to a uh, epiphany, you know, a few years ago. Or, I mean, when the band started out, I was definitely, I was definitely not an advocate of good health. But um, I've kind of realized that if you wanna, if you wanna keep doing what you love, you need to, you need to take care of yourself in a way. And uh, I'm not saying I live the healthiest lifestyle today, but uh, but I definitely believe that you can't, you know, you can't party every day for the rest of your life. So. Yeah. Right. So things had to like uh, kind of clean up a little bit in a way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, um, and they have substantially since, since the beginning of the band. So uh, yeah. l- let's kind of get into if, if you're, you know, willing to speak to it, like some of the musical elements of the record, like, you know, yeah. I, I noticed, um, you know, that you guys are embracing some like new wave and more synthesizers here and there on certain tracks and, um, you know, calling back to uh, some bands and songs like from, you know, the classic uh, new wave and post-punk era. Like uh, it, it seems like in some ways the instrumentals and the songwriting are sweetening a little bit, getting catchier. Like, is that kind of a conscious effort to kind of make these songs come across a bit snappier? Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of a conscious effort, conscious effort to, uh, to just not make every, to not make everything too, uh, too easy to, uh, to absorb, hmm. or at least for people like us. I mean, it, cause it would be pretty easier for, it would be pretty easy for us to make a, uh, just straight post-punk punk record, you know, with, uh, distorted guitars and heavy bass and, you know all this shit and like songs like ADD and stuff when we started uh when we recorded that for the first time like the first version the demo versions of that song they sound like a punk song like it's very you know heavy bass and drums guitar all that shit and then like the only thing that's left from that song is probably the vocals and we just switched out everything to uh electronics pretty much and I think what we tried to do was just make ourselves uncomfortable as often as possible when we made this record. And uh, a lot of it was our producer. He's just like, yeah, but you guys can do this fucking song. You guys could have done this any day. Like, and then he would like do a mix of it. That would just like the first time he would show me it. I'm like, this is fucking horrible. I hate this. Like, what have you done? What have you done with my baby? Uh, And then he would just be like, yeah, but you know, let it, uh, let it sink in. Uh, and the more I kind of let things sink in and tried going out of my comfort zone, the more I liked it, the more I liked the stuff because I thought it was more like fuck off to it's more fuck you to what people expect from us, Mm. uh, which, uh, which I enjoy. Mm. Uh, and like, I enjoy listening to things that we've done that are just like, what the hell is this? Like, is this some stupid, like, some stupid pop song that sounds like, you know, blah, blah, blah had written it. Uh, and, uh, I just love that feeling. And I love bands that do that. Like, and especially bands that come from like the new wave or post-punk scene back in the seventies or whatever that, you know, like, like wire or whatever, would make a punk record. And then the next record would sound like, I don't know, like chairs and be much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just much different. And, uh, and probably upset a lot of people, but you know, in the end kind of makes, uh, I don't know, they were doing what they wanted to do and, uh, I want to do what I want to do. Right. And I want to keep on doing weird, weird shit that takes me out of my, takes me out of my comfort zone. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that kind of fuck you attitude, would you say that applies to a track like big boy, for example, like, you know, with it being oh, yeah. like severely more lo-fi than almost ever, anything else on the record. Yeah. I mean, uh, and big boy, we wrote that song, uh, cause we were in a, we were in this studio out in the countryside and that's one of the few songs that made it to the, we made, we like recorded an entire record like a while ago and mm-hmm. we were like, okay, this is, this is the third record. Uh, and we had this idea that we were going to sound like Rolling Stones or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, it was going to be like exile on main street. It was just going to be like, you know, like a bunch of acoustic instruments, a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of dilly dallying studio and uh we um uh we wrote all these songs and then we were like 
it was, it was pretty good, but we were like, no, we, we need to redo the entire thing. And one of the only songs that made it from there was uh, Big Boy and the vocals from ADD. Hmm. But uh, Big Boy was a song that we recorded at 4 a.m., I think, and we were all uh, very intoxicated. And we had this, we were all listening to Stones or something and some like old blues records. We were like, yeah, let's just fucking go in there, man. And we went in there and started playing the song. We we're like, this is sick. And then we heard it the next day. And we're like, oh, this is horrible. Uh, but our producer, he took it and he's like, no, no, I think this is actually pretty cool. And we're like, uh, really? And then he fucked around with it. And then he added, I went to the studio one day and he's like, yeah, I've been working on Big Boy. And I'm like, okay. And then he he played it up for me and he had added this hip hop beat halfway yeah, through yeah. this. And I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? You know, it and sounded like I, it sounded I, like some shit out of the '90s, like uh, yeah, yeah. Like some, and I like, loved it, like Everlast. <laughs> no, but I loved it because it kind of reminded me of like Beck, right, and like, right, like oh, like that record Odelay, right, know? and uh, and I was like, fuck yeah, this is cool, you know. And then we added this. Uh, it it went into this like house beat also this do, 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 like this kind of dub house beat thing and i'm like this is so uh special uh so i was like yeah th and that became uh that became one of my favorite songs on the record so yeah yeah it, hopefully we hear more of those drunk blue blues jams at, at some point yeah maybe they'll yeah, crop yeah. up on on future records um i hope so too yeah <laughs> i wanted to ask you about uh you know your, your your vocal approach uh you know generally because you know on a lot of these songs or just on a lot of iagra boy songs you're not merely just like singing um on some tracks especially ones who run more of like a uh, kind of a spoken word angle you're sort of like in character and performing you know which is essentially the case for creepy crawlers for example like is there a kind of i don't know uh, with, without kind of doubling back on a lot of the stuff that we talked about earlier in terms of what inspired kind of the themes of these songs like is there kind of a mindset you need to go into to be like I'm going to become this guy, uh, you know, and essentially become this frightening, manic, completely out of control dude on the mic and, and sort of just embody this, this, you know, this persona. Yeah, I think I think much more with this album that I probably embody someone that maybe I'm actually not not, but maybe they have a certain maybe they have they've got a percent of who I am. But uh, much more in the other albums, I was that person and I was living through I was living you know, I was, I was channeling myself maybe more in the other albums. And now I'm not as, I'm not as clinically insane as I was uh, five years ago. So I probably have to channel other people through me, but I think what it comes down to is I love, I love storytelling hmm. and like, that's kind of how I see songs is like, it needs to be a, it needs to be a story. Like I love listening to something where there's a beginning and an end and there's a, it's not just it's not just words, but it kind of tells a story, and um, and so I've I kind of I think I just try to become that storyteller in a way, you know, hmm. if that makes any sense. But yeah. no, I I think it does. Uh, to to yeah. kind of dig into what you kind of said there about I don't know um, that percentage of yourself that you may see in some of these characters on or this character on this record who's like you know ranting about like the vaccines and there's taking yeah. information out of you like you know would, would you say that seeing yourself or a part of yourself in that type of person is what attracts you to telling the story of that person yeah for sure i mean i understand a lot of these people that i try to channel uh and uh yeah i understand what's enticing about you know believing that there's a some crazy story behind things and like you know I, I was probably like that uh much more years ago myself but but yeah i mean i see myself in in a lot of people so uh and in a lot of people's stories so yeah i try to i try to put myself into it and also try to I don't know, try to try to put myself in other people's shoes and and you know feel what they feel and um, you know maybe if I, I make these people sound completely insane but I don't think they are you know I think they're yeah I don't know <laughs> but you know they're just as insane as I am you know like <laughs> well, I'm I'm not 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of talk about the way that they look at things as, as being maybe a mindset that you embrace to a degree in your past. Like, what would you say personally brought you to the point where you are now to maybe where you had some realizations where, okay, you know, maybe like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like an example, but, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm getting at. Yeah. I think I, I think I just had too many of these people around me, you know, like, uh, and saw that, that a lot of these people were not very, or just lived a life of constant, you know, like of constant mistrust and, you know, uh, and anger. And I think I'm just at a place where I'm not as angry any, anymore at things and like where I can just where, and also where I just don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. Like, hmm. you know, like I don't, you know, I don't think that my government is uh, conspiring against me because I don't think that they're smart enough to. <laughs> and, and also like, and even if they were, I'm just like, I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, I'm all right. You know, I've got an apartment. I've got, I've got some nice people in my life. You know, I can wake up every day and not get shot. And, you know, like, you know, I don't give well, a fuck. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm jealous I'm, of that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. You live in America probably. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. I, I just think that I'm uh, at a better place in life where I don't know uh, where I'm not so afraid of everything anymore. And I don't really know. Uh, I don't know. I don't care too much to be so upset, like uh, about things that uh, that could be. You know, I get upset. I get upset uh, at a lot of things that are going on in this world, but those are pretty. You know, there's enough to be upset about than making up shit to be upset about. Mm. If that makes any sense. No, it does. And and what you were saying earlier does kind of seem to be a pretty essential ingredient in the pie that like you find yourself surrounded by like-minded people and you just kind of like feed into that and it's kind of like the internet has allowed people to do nothing but surround themselves with people like that if that is kind of yeah. like the poison that they choose to drink yeah yeah so yeah all yeah people people have a uh exactly they uh all of a sudden they've got a bunch of like-minded people and they think that uh i don't know man it's dark <laughs> <laughs> no for sure I mean, you know, con- considering that and I don't know, um, and a host of other things as well, I, th- I think I'd like to ask you about like, you know, wh- what's the band's general read on things like, you know, the just internet and art in, I mean, just art and music in the internet age, you know, because obviously like that kind of ties into Viagra Boy's lore and, you know, not just the fact <laughs> that, uh, you know, this, this record is sort of the way that it is, uh, but also like, you know, Obviously, you guys personally have struggles with just getting the band promoted effectively because Viagra is in the name, and you know it's like uh, your, your yeah. you know your emails may end up in a fucking spam folder because of uh, you know the band name. I I myself had a hard time. I I was typing into, <laughs> yeah. the, into the Twitch notification box, "Hey, Viagra Boys interview," and it's like, oh, we don't we don't like that you've typed Viagra in the box. Don't yeah, uh, and you get it goes to spam right away. Yeah, yeah don't don't. Do I that. mean, um, I can't speak too much for the band because like certain guys in the band don't even have an instagram you know and they don't give a fuck about anything right uh and they don't really you know they they're more into the music side of things but uh uh i'm definitely i don't know i love it i mean i love the internet i think it's a it's a crazy place and it's this uh and i love all this craziness and i love all this you know confusion and and things get like lost in translation and uh i don't know i think it's a it's a cool time to be alive. And (laughs) a lot of people get very scared. A lot of people get very scared of what's going on and shit, but I don't, I think it's like people were scared in the fifties too, that, you know, whatever they were scared of, I don't know, the microwave oven or something and thought that it would destroy the world. But, you know, like, uh, I think it's, uh, I, I don't know. I'm the type. I, I spend a lot of time on the internet. I I, lo- I watch a lot of YouTube, and I watch like uh, I don't know. I get into weird rabbit holes and stuff like that. And like, <laughs> and uh, I love looking at shit on my phone. And like, you know, I'm not a. Uh, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> what, what's 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 your newest weirdest rabbit hole that you're really into? Oh, I don't know, man. But um, it's all right. You don't have to tell us your whole YouTube history. <laughs> I watch a lot of uh, internet comment uh, etiquette 
and i watch a lot of oh uh, shit i love that guy yeah i love eric and uh and i love uh channel five news yeah uh i think i've I've like a few of those things in creepy crawlers that's all even the word creepy crawlers that's from an interview from channel five news Mm -hmm. that he's interviewing this guy and he's like man they're putting microchips in the vaccine and they're they've got these creepy crawlies and they're turning kids into lizards and like <laughs> and i just like all right i'm 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 taking that i'm i'm putting that into a song like that's that's beautiful you know no his, i love that his videos are great we had an interview with him recently and he's uh he's gonna have me in a video oh soon. you did yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, rad. Oh, he's great okay, cool one of my favorite videos is the um the flat earth conference and one of the reasons why oh. is that there were so many people there who rapped uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a single place he's gone to where as many people who he ran into had like a rap verse ready about whatever it was the topic or the reason that they're there. But uh, for whatever reason there, they did. And it was great. Yeah, he's got a radar for finding rappers for sure in, right. in all sorts of uh, environments. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that, that last video he did uh, with this um, after Roe vs. Wade. Mm-hmm. where he found his like old buddy that he used to rap with too. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that, that he, had, he also had a rapping career. Well, yeah, I mean, I've seen him freestyle before. So yeah. But. Is there a, you know, similarly, you know, considering like your, your draw to these kinds of, I don't know, personalities, mindsets, outlooks, like, you know, could you foresee, um, you know, a, a series of albums from you guys where it's like you're kind of taking on a different, I don't know, worldview or outlook and kind of like painting an image or a character portrait of that, like on an entire record or at least in pieces. Um, Probably not so much as I think we've kind of done it now with this album right in a way. Yeah. So I, I don't think I'm going to be dabbling in that again, mm-hmm. or I can't really see myself doing it. But who knows? I mean, who knows what's going to happen next year? For sure. You know, there could, there could be some brand new crazy shit going on. And um, I don't know. It was kind of a, yeah, I've never really commented like real world shit going on before until right. now. Right. And I find, I find it kind of scary, but, uh, but we'll see, you know, uh, but I think, I think probably next time it'll be some weird, uh, weird other concept that maybe is not so, uh, um, current uh, current event eventy you know yeah. given, given that this is kind of like the first time that you guys are majorly dipping your toes into that has there been any kind of like reaction or pushback to oh this is like getting political or some bullshit like that yeah yeah, yeah. i've seen i've seen comments and uh frankly i don't i don't i don't fucking care you know like i'm gonna talk about whatever the hell i want to talk about and uh yeah I mean, uh, I usually do it with a grain of salt too. So if people can't take that, then then they can go fuck themselves. Okay. Respectfully. (laughs) (laughs) Diverging from some of the major themes of the record, you know, there's, there's punk rock loser, uh, which definitely has a story of its own. I wanted to ask you just kind of like point blank, um, you know, what is kind of the character portrait that you're trying to paint on that track and, and what, you know, sort of inspired it. Is it something of kind of like a self portrait or kind of a vision of somebody else who you had imagined? Yeah. That's also going back to being a bit of both in a way um, where I think it's kind of like, that's the type of song that I would have wrote for, you know, a couple albums ago or whatever. Hmm. And that's kind of the way I, you know, it's, it's kind of this song about, you know, the way you feel after you've had two or three beers and you're just like, I'm the fucking king of the world. Fuck everybody else. You know, like here I am. Uh, and you just feel like a boss. And, uh, I just wanted to kind of tap into that again. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, at the same time, put it down a little bit. Right. Cause there's so like, it's, 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 there's swagger, but there's self deprecation there too. Yeah. And that's exactly how I would describe it as swagger and self deprecation, <laughs> which uh, is my, which is, which is my life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, it, may, maybe it's not quite as, as literal as, maybe in my own head, I would want it to be because it would be so funny if it was, but, um, you know, is, is ain't no thief based on like a real life experience or something or a part of a real uh, life yeah. experience? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's kind of like, it's kind of based on, 
I used to be a speed freak and like, uh, and I had all sorts of things going on. Like I was, you know, stealing bicycles and, uh, you know, into all sorts of theft and, uh, and other not so uh, good behavior. And, but when I would get confronted about it, I would just think that that person is like, you know, how dare you? Like, how the fuck could you ever confront someone like me about being a thief or anything like that? Like, you know me. Like, how the fuck could you say that? You know, and I would just be like, you know, screaming and yelling, like, you, like, you of all people, you of all people confronting me, you know, when in fact I was, I was a thief and I was, I was a, an idiot, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's just me kind of, and like, seeing back at it now is it's kind of funny that i could i could get so upset about being called uh being called a thief or a criminal and stuff like that when when i clearly was so uh it's uh it's it's also this kind of a juxtaposition that's just uh that's uh funny funny to me i find it funny and that that song is just kind of uh written to be a little bit funny so yeah. yeah. No, it's it's interesting that that's kind of like the personal angle of it because when you listen to the track, like you don't necessarily get the sense that the protagonist is the one who's in the wrong, you know. And it's, oh, and it's, okay. It's, oh. And it's the person. It's the. I don't know if it reads that way to you, you know. Oh, the, uh, for me, the point of it is to read that I am a thief, you know, right, and that right. I'm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because ob- I'm like obviously I'm like, like <laughs> I, I, you know, just me having six or seven lighters in my right. pocket, like. And that's something that literally today, I don't know how it happens, but I've always got, I've always got like six lighters in my pocket and I've never paid for a lighter. So I don't know how they got there. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously yeah. like the stipulations are pretty far fetched in terms of like the specificity of like the jacket and the lighters and so on and so forth. But, yeah, but yeah. The, the, the defense seems so convincing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, when, when you're, uh, I don't know. When you're a drug addict, you can be pretty convincing of everything. (laughs) Got it. Yeah. You get good at that. Well, I mean, earlier you talked about kind of this progress that you've, you've made in terms of like separating yourself from this, like anger, conspiracy mindset, bitterness mentally. It's like, you know, as as far as that kind of like trajectory of, you know, your life, um, you know, how, and and what did it take for you to kind of, you know, uh, move past that as well, you know, kind of like uh, being able to kind of, uh, kick an addictive state and get back to a point or get to a point of, of, I guess, you know, relative stability. Yeah. Probably just like, like ruining a lot of relationships and, uh, ending up in a place of solitary, I don't know, just being, just feeling alone after a while and, uh, realizing that I surrounded myself with a bunch of, you know, pretty, negative fucked up people as well and also coming to a coming to a realization that i wanted to live a longer life than what i had planned before Hmm. and uh and also like when things started working out with viag boys like i was like okay you know maybe i want this to last a little bit longer than one or two albums so Hmm. yeah so that was still something that you were kind of moving out of as the band was like getting going oh yeah. yeah yeah i was deep into it uh, for the first, for the first uh, four years. Yeah. Hmm. And, you know, would you say like in a way the band kind of gave you the focus or kind of like the, I don't know, yeah, like yeah, the, the, the lifesaver ba- to be like, I'm going to hang on to this instead. For sure. For sure. The band has been definitely a lifesaver. I don't know what I would have done without it. So yeah, I'm definitely thankful for that. Hmm. I mean, you know, what would you say prior to Viagra boys, you know, were like, I don't know your, your personal artistic ambitions up until that point, like, you know, was music and recording and writing something that you did regularly. And then you kind of just found this outlet for the band. No, not at all. Uh, I did, uh, I lived in America growing up. Uh, I went to high school for two years in America or three years in America. And, um, and I was born. So I grew, I went, I lived in America until I was 17. And uh, about where in America did you live? Uh, San Rafael, California. Oh, okay. And uh, so I played in a couple bands with a friend of mine named Jake. Uh, and we just had like, uh, like we would play at school battle of the bands and stuff and do like flipper and Devo covers and stuff like that. <laughs> nice. And, uh, but we were, um, 
never anything serious really like just having fun um and his uh yeah his dad and his mom showed me a lot about music and i was super into it back then and um and then when I moved to Sweden, I don't think I had any plans on making music or anything like that. I kind of gave that up because I wanted to become a tattooer. And uh, I started tattooing when I was 19. And uh, when I started tattooing, I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. So I didn't have any plans on making music at all uh, until my uh, bass player saw me uh, perform a Mariah Carey song at his girlfriend's karaoke party. Uh, and then he was just like, Hey man, we need to start a band. And I'm like, all right, sure. Yeah, whatever. And I just like, I just kind of said like, yeah, whatever, dude. Uh, Sorry. Which Mariah Carey song was this? Uh, we belong together. Uh-huh. And you were, my, yeah. were, were you hitting the whistle notes or anything or like, what? what no, like- I think I was just like screaming kind of, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was hitting some notes at least. Cause, uh, he saw something in me uh-huh. <laughs> and then was like, yeah, we need to start a band. And I was like, yeah, whatever, dude. Uh, I thought we just kind of said that when we were drunk and didn't really. And then like a few weeks later, he like texted me and he's like, yeah, we got band practice on Wednesday. And I'm like, what? Like, no, dude, I don't want. I don't. And then I'm like, dude, I don't have any songs. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's like, just show up, just come there. You don't have to have anything ready. I'm like, oh, fuck. So then I got there and I didn't have anything to do. And he's just like, just just say whatever, just say whatever in the mic. And I'm like, okay. And then I said some shit and it ended up being can't, can't get it up, which was our first single like years ago on our first EP. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the rest is history. Uh, and yeah. So, so, you know, saying that or kind of like coming through with that song and performance, I mean, was that pretty much just like, I don't know, just like completely flying by the seat of your pants, just like f- improving off the top of your head and just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Or I was just like, there was a lot of pressure on me in the, in the practice room there. And I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll just do anything. And then I think my, my basis bank, I could see a lot of, a lot of my inspirations and stuff through what I was doing. So he saw something in there and was like, okay, well, yeah, this, he said that I sounded like uh, the singer of the dicks. I don't, I don't remember his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the first, the first transsexual front man, I think in the seventies uh, or for a punk band at least. Uh, but he thought that I sounded like him and that I was really flattered. So I'm like, Oh yeah, maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll keep doing this. Uh, so, yeah. You know, would you say that that has remained to be even on the third album, kind of like an essential part of your process at this point? Or do you try to go into these songs? I mean, especially on this record with there being so many themes on it uh, with kind of like a written outlined idea to kind of approach things with. Um, no matter how hard I try, I can't I can't have a like outlined idea until it, it all kind of happens subconsciously. Like I'll start right. I've said this in another interview, but I think my brain only has, it. Only, it's only got space for like three or four ideas at a time. So everything that I do ends up taking from one of those ideas. Uh, and that's why it kind of has a cohesive feeling to it is because, I don't know, everything gets connected in that way uh, that I have like, you know, I'm thinking about monkeys or I'm thinking about shrimps or I'm thinking about uh, another topic that I find uh, just floating around in my brain. And um, yeah, it ends up being, it ends up like when I, when I wrote well for jazz um, uh, yeah. And with the album before I'm like, Oh wow. Like uh, a lot of these songs have this weird connection. And like, I had no idea until after I'd written it. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Uh, and I think that just kind of happens subconsciously. And yeah, I like, uh, it's cool. Okay. Well, um, Look, I mean, uh, you guys have a tour coming up as well. Like, uh, you know, what should people be expecting in terms of that? I'm going to try to make it out to an October show. So, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know. But um, I don't know. We'll probably be playing a lot from the new album, so it should be cool. So okay. if, uh, if you like the new album, come to come to the shows. So we'll be playing a lot of that, and then maybe some of our more classic songs as well. Yeah, classic. I mean, at this point, you know, with like sports at the age that is, do you feel like that's kind of like a classic post-punk song like sure. for, the, for the whole genre? For the whole genre? Yeah, for the whole genre. I mean, I would say uh, that, honestly, even with it being as young as it is. Oh, well, if you say so. Well, yeah, I'm flattered. But uh, 
but yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it's a classic just because it felt like I wrote it 10 years ago, but it's, I think it's five years ago now, but, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm flattered. Thanks. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I think it's been a great conversation. I appreciate you coming through being an open book about the album yourself. Uh, is, is there anything uh, that you want to leave people with as you head out? Um, just keep on rocking in the free world. Great. Good advice. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good yeah. one. Yeah. D- Thanks a lot. D- DM me the score later. Oh yeah. I'll yeah. DM. S- yeah. S- s- send me the preferential score. Okay. It's a, it's an 11. Okay. Great. Good. No, that's good. Right. That's good. My, my right. first, wow. My first 11, it'll be my first 11. I've never given an 11 before. Oh, uh, well, there's a first for everything. All right. I'll talk to you later. Take, take care, man. Bye. Bye-bye.